All right, let's get to work. I wonder where these chords come from. This whole lecture is about the 2-5-1 progression. Well, where does the 2 chord come from? Where does the 5 chord come from? Where does the 1 chord come from? To be honest with you, they all come from the major scale. There's no exceptions. It's all an, in an incredible diatonic experience. They're just from that major scale. Let's prove it. Take a peek at the attachment that I have as a part of this lecture. Uh, interestingly, it's called uh, deriving and identifying the two, five, and the one chord. <laughs> but if you print that or if you have that up on your tablet so that you can refer to it, you'll find that the top line is simply the C major scale. Just this. Not a big deal. If you want to play it the way piano players play it, it's one, two, three, or thumb, index, finger, middle finger, and then cross under like this. Cross under here. And on the way down, cross over with your middle finger right here. Under. And over with your middle finger. Second line of, uh, the second, not the second line of music, but the second line on that worksheet uh, simply creates triads on each of those scale degrees. But this is where it gets interesting, and this is where we should talk. You and I have this discussion about which ones are major and which ones are minor. And identify those using some Roman numeral analysis. And ideally, capital Roman numeral means major, lowercase Roman numeral means minor. You'll see on my on the sheet that I've provided you, um, there's a bit of an idiosyncrasy when it comes to this jazz font that I'm using, and it's not very conspicuous as to which ones are capitals and which ones are lower cases. Um, so you'll see that I've chosen just briefly for the two chord uh, a different font so that you can more conspicuously see the like the two little eyes with the, the dot on top of it meaning minor. Here's the second line. You can try it using any fingers you want. I'm using one, two, and four. You could easily use one, three, and five. Whatever, whatever, whatever is comfortable for you. Now let's take our time and let's listen and let's identify. It's a it's a 50-50 chance, but I I'll bet it the chances are better for you. Which one's major? Which one's minor? Which one's major? Which one's minor? Here's the first one. Major. Next one. Minor. The next one. Minor. The next one. Major. The next one. Major. The next one. Minor. The last one. I'm sorry to be a scoundrel. This is neither major nor minor. It's close to minor. This is kind of a super minor chord. They, this is called a diminished chord, and you'll see the analysis has a little exponent, a little small zero, like a little degree sign meaning diminished. We'll forego talking about that for the purposes of this video. If you or if you don't process by hearing, or if you only in part process by hearing, or if you can't hear the distinction between major and minor, I have a, an assist uh, for that, a point of reference for that, and that is simply counting intervals. If we're looking to, to create a major triad, all I have to do is count four half steps from the root to the third. If I want to create a minor triad, I count three half steps. Let's do it together. We said this is major. All right, let's count half steps from the root. One, two, three, four. Four half steps means a major triad. A major. I'm zipping up to four. There's four. One, two, three, four half steps. So the four chord is also major. Five. One, two, three, four. Five is also a major triad. So C, in this case, C, F, N, G, one, four, and five are all major. Point of reference should sound similar to sound similar to 1, 4, and 5. 
All right, let's do the others, two, three, and six. And again, we're gonna forego talking about the seven chord, the diminished chord for the purposes of this lecture. Two. Counting from the root, one, two, three, three half steps. It will always produce a minor chord. Three. One, two, three half steps. E is also minor. three chords, two, three, and six are minor, should sound like this, should sound like this. Okay, in summary, if we look at that second line on the worksheet, you and I find that the one chord is major, the two chord is minor, and the five chord is major. That's enough for that second line and enough to give us a basis for this lecture. To really seal the deal, I'm going to the third line on the worksheet, and this is the creation of seventh chords. I create them the same way. Instead of using three tones, I'm using four tones. The, again, the fingering doesn't much matter. Uh, you could try one, two, four, five, whatever, whatever's, whatever's comfortable for your hand is fine. Remember, the triad, the, the, the major part of the chord, I shouldn't say major part of the chord, the, 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 the main part of the chord, the part that we mentioned in the second line of music, is going to be the same. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, one, right? This is gonna be the same. All I'm doing, this is additive. I'm adding a note on the top. And so let's look at this uh, last note, this seventh. Here's the root one, two, three. Here's the third, four, five. Here's the fifth, six, seven. Here's the seventh. But I want to show you a bit of a trick, a little bit of a hint. Instead of counting it from the base or counting from uh, uh, from the beginning, numerically speaking, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's start at eight and go backwards. That's easy. It's so easy. If we have a C here, and I go to the other C, this is what we call an octave, or eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pitches. If I, if I knock that down one half step, that's seven, isn't it? So that first chord is C major, and I'm using a major seven. C major seven is the name of this chord. You'll see that in the analysis, one major seven. In some circles, people who are talking analysis and theory and sort of, you know, uh, 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 highbrow harmony classes and things of that nature, some people call, especially in classical circles, people call this a major, major seven chord, major, major chord, or major, major seven chord. It's a major triad with a major seven. It's very logical. Let's go to the next chord in the discussion of this lecture. This is the two chord. We've already determined it's minor, but let's look at the seventh. Here's eight. If I go down a half step, that's this, isn't it? So it's interesting, in this case, I'm actually going down a whole step. So let's go back here. This is D to D. There's eight. If I go down a half step, there's seven. If I go down another half step, that's flat seven. So in, a, in this case, D minor seven, it's got the root, we've got a, a lowered third or a minor third, and a fifth. We hear that minor chord. And when we add the seven, it's a lowered seven, it's a flat seven. Again, back in those uh, circles that might be dealing with analysis or in a harmony class or you're in a music theory class or something to that effect, uh, you might hear this referred to as a minor, minor seven chord. A minor, minor seven chord. It's a minor triad with a minor seven. Eight, major seven, minor seven, eight, seven, flat seven. However you want to determine that. Let's zip up to five and we'll button this guy up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five is a different animal altogether. This is a major triad. We already determined that. If I do this trick again, here's eight, here's seven. Interesting. Eight, seven, and a lowered seven. Wow. Eight, major seven, flat seven. Eight, the major seven, 
and then the flatted or lowered seventh. So this is a major triad with a lowered seventh. This is referred to as a dominant chord, a dominant chord. Again, in those circles that use sort of the <laughs> double verbiage there, this is a major minor seven chord. Most people just refer to it as a dominant seven chord. In summary, here it is. We have three chords. Major seven is one. The two chord is a minor seven. The five chord is a dominant seven. And this will be true for all keys, all 12 of the keys. One is major, two is minor seven, and five is a dominant seven. More to come.